If your applications are not landing interviews, then recruiters are putting your resume straight in the shredder. A study by Pathrise found that the average engineer submits 125 applications before getting a job. That might sound crazy if you're just starting to look, but the average length of a job search is actually down from last year's peak. So why isn't your resume getting the attention it deserves? And what can you do to beat the average and land the job you actually want? In this video, I'm explaining the three engineering resume rules that you need to follow if you want to land an interview this year. In case you're new here, my name's Chris, and I've been a professional embedded systems designer design engineer for about three years. In that time, I've attended dozens of networking and recruiting events, looked at hundreds, if not thousands of engineering resumes, and spoken directly with the managers that made the final decision on who to hire. The rules I'm going to share with you are not only based on my own experience working with college students and interns, but on proven data collected from thousands of applications in the last few years. My discipline is a blend of hardware and software engineering, but these rules can be applied to any technical job. So no matter what your discipline is, this video is packed with information to help you on your journey. Let's dive in to rule number one, only include meaningful projects. Take this as a sign to get those class projects off your resume. I was at a networking event a few months ago and I saw the same project on five different resumes. And even on the first one, I knew it was a class project because I took that class too. If a recruiter can tell that a project was an assignment or that you just followed an online tutorial, then it will really hurt the credibility of the rest of your resume. But that doesn't mean you should skip the project section altogether. In fact, projects are the best way to flex your skills and show recruiters and hiring managers how passionate you are. If you only take one thing away from this video, understand that meaningful projects are what get your resume past that initial filtering. So what makes a project meaningful? First of all, it needs to be novel. I don't care if you made the best to-do list app the world has ever seen, no one is ever going to believe you because it's been done a million times. Then it either needs to solve a problem or have active users. It's okay if you're the only user as long as it's something you actually use often. Next, your project needs to have specific and measurable outcomes. These results are how you convey the impact of your work and that's what a hiring manager wants to see before scheduling you for an interview. And finally, it needs to hit the keywords in the job listing. A study from Cultivated Culture shows that the average resume only includes half of the keywords listed on the application they're submitted for. I'm sure you've heard that you have to customize your resume for every application, but the project section is where you have the most flexibility and the highest impact. When updating your resume, don't just look at minimum qualifications. You should go through the list of preferred qualifications and sort them into two categories, experience you already have and experience you can get. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say, I don't know how to do that, or that's just not something I'm good at. That mindset is not going to get you the job. Companies are looking to hire engineers who are self-sufficient and have a strong work ethic. And this is an opportunity for you to demonstrate that. Look at that list of experiences you can get and see if you can identify a problem that can be solved with at least one of those skills. Then come up with a metric that can verify your outcome. Give yourself a two day deadline to make a prototype that validates the idea and then decide if you want to explore the topic further or move on to something else. You'd be amazed at what you can accomplish in just two days if you have a well-defined problem with a measurable outcome. Let's look at this job listing for an embedded firmware engineer at Meta Reality Labs as an example. I can demonstrate most of these preferred qualifications with projects I've already done, but I really would like to get some hands-on experience with video pipelines and encoding technologies. My LED wall suffers from a low frame rate due to a data throughput bottleneck. I could solve this problem by encoding the data on my PC before transmitting it and then decode it in the firmware on the wall. The outcome would be measured by the increase in frame rate after these changes. That's just an example, but hopefully you can see how I took the specific keywords from a job listing that I found interesting and turned that into an actionable project that can be prototyped in just a few days and have an immediate impact on the quality of my resume. If you're looking to take your projects to the next level, then you absolutely need to check out the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. Their two layer PCBs start at just $2 and the build quality is industry leading. Lately, I've been a big fan of their PCB assembly service, which is not only 
affordable, but comes out flawlessly every time. Their customer service will happily help with any layout issues or part shortages, and they have a very quick response time. The best part is, I can start a design and have fully assembled boards in my hand in just over a week. If circuits aren't your thing, then you should definitely give their 3D printing a try. They printed this custom case for my home server out of nylon, which is notoriously difficult to work with and the print quality speaks for itself. They also offer full color prints, including this beautiful clear that has an unbelievable finish. You can use my link in the description to get $60 worth of coupons that you can apply towards your order. Thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and being a longtime partner of the channel. Now let's get back to rule number two, focus on results. This is the thing I see wrong on at least 90% of the resumes I look at. It's a little hard to explain, so I'll just show you an example. This person is applying for a computer engineering internship and used this class project on their resume. It's a traffic control system and they wrote, worked with a team of students to design, prototype, and build a scale traffic control system using computer vision and AI. Programmed a Raspberry Pi to control traffic lights based on real-time data from AI predictions. Presented the project to peers and instructors highlighting the potential benefits of AI-driven traffic management. If this sounds similar to your resume entries, that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with these bullet points, but there are much better ways to convey the important information about this project. Resumes are all about information density, and the most important aspect of a project is the results you achieve. Now would be a good time to pull out a notebook or open a document and start writing down the projects you may want to include in your resume. For each of those projects, what were the measurable outcomes and how did you achieve them? I like to use the XYZ format when writing bullet points for my projects and work experience. That looks like this. Accomplished X as measured by Y resulting in Z. Let's take another look at the traffic control example from earlier, but rewrite the bullet points into this format. Instead of worked with a team of students to design, prototype, and build a scale traffic control system using computer vision and AI, we could say achieved a 20% reduction in simulated traffic congestion measured by average commute time by developing a traffic control system using computer vision and AI algorithms. Now this is only a few more words but it has so much more depth. By focusing on results, you're immediately telling the person reading your resume why they should care. This is why it's so important to give your projects measurable outcomes. A manager can look at that and think, we could make so much money if our processes were 20% more efficient. Now there are some cases where the results aren't as enticing, but the experience is still valuable and worth mentioning. For those cases, I would recommend either the STAR, Situation, Task, Action, and Results format, or the CAR, Challenge, Action, and Result format. And both of these put the result at the end. These don't have the same impact as XYZ, but they still condense information into a digestible bullet point and keep your resume from ballooning with meaningless noise. If you're enjoying the video so far, then please be sure to leave a like for the algorithm and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this. I also just launched a channel membership and Patreon where you can get access to copy and paste schematic templates that accelerate project development from a multi-day process to just a few hours. You'll also get access to the Tech Designers Network where you can get project help and resume advice directly from me and the community. So please consider signing up below. And finally, here's rule number three, the seven second rule. The seven second rule states that a recruiter will only look at your resume for seven seconds before deciding whether to add it to the pile of further considerations or toss it aside never to be seen again. Recruiters aren't actually sitting there with a timer, but I can guarantee they're not reading through everything line by line. If you haven't done this already, pause the video and pull up your resume. Now, set a seven second timer and see how much information you can pick out in that time. Yeah, it's not much. Seven seconds is hardly even enough time to read the first paragraph. So how can we fix this? Well, when it comes to formatting, everyone seems to have their own preference. But after seeing what works, 
Here's my advice. Generally, you should have your education at the top, followed by meaningful projects, which should take up a majority of the page, then work or volunteer experience, and finally a section for skills at the bottom, where you can drop any keywords that didn't make it into your project section. If you're someone who has significant working history in your field, then your work experience section should take up a majority of the page, and you can move education all the way down to the bottom. But no matter what, keep your resume to one page. If your resume is longer than that, then you are either formatting wrong or you are not being concise with your descriptions. Now here is my hot take that's gonna get me banned from the engineering resume subreddit. <laughs> I actually like having a second column, but it has to be done right. Let's look at an example of a horrible resume, and then I'll show you how I would do it today. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little embarrassed to show this, but here is the resume that I made when I was in college, and I was very proud of it at the time, but when I look at it now, I can clearly see why I was getting no traction from any of my applications. Let's apply the seven second rule to this resume starting now. Okay, I see Christopher Parker. He is a student at Oregon State. He has a YouTube channel looking to start a career and he took the required courses that everyone takes. Okay, I went a few seconds over, but I think you get the idea. You learned nothing about me in that time that suggests I would be a good fit for the job. There's a lot of great information in this resume, but it's buried so deep that no one will ever see it. I wasted the most valuable space on the page with information that was completely unnecessary. The first thing in my work experience is a lifeguarding job when I have two relevant internships that make way more sense to highlight. And I think the worst offense is these massive blocks of text that are impossible to read without falling asleep. If I could go back in time with the knowledge I have now, here's how I would have formatted my resume to follow the seven second rule. First, I'm keeping it clean with just my name and email at the top. Then I've got my education followed by my project section. I've filled this with meaningful projects and started each bullet point with an impactful metric. Then I have my work experience and I removed lifeguarding work and left only my relevant internships. On the right, I have my skills and coursework. Normally I wouldn't include coursework, but it does help to fill out the page. If you have any ideas for what to do with this space, then please let me know down in the comments. And finally, I have all of my links like my YouTube channel, GitHub page, and LinkedIn. If you're gonna include any links, then make sure you are actively maintaining them and be sure to type them out rather than hyperlinking. I really like the simplicity of this format. I think the columns actually make the bullet points more digestible and help guide your eyes to the more important information. Skills and coursework are mostly there to get picked up by any filters that a screener is going to use, so pushing them off to the right actually helps keep the reader engaged with the content that really matters. I hope you guys apply these tips to improve your resume, and if you land an interview, let us know what you did down in the comments. If you want to get some tips on getting projects done faster, then you should check out this video right here where I build a puzzle game that has home assistant integration in just one week. Thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring the video. Thanks to you for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.